Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and that's what I always, you know, and I always try to think about that. Sometimes we, uh, you know, some people just got bad moms. I mean, it's just part of life. Some moms ain't good, but um, one thing that I always try to remember, without mom, there's no me or there's no my wife. There's no, you know. That's why I think the Bible tells us we're to honor our father and mother because without them, we would not have life. We wouldn't. And um, that's the great thing about uh, mothers. They're awesome. Um, and I'm thankful for my mom. I'm thankful for all you moms. And uh, I just wish y'all a happy, blessed Mother's Day. So today I'm going to talk about moms. I'm going to uh, pray and we'll get started. Dear Heavenly Father, I love you, Lord. I praise you. I thank you for all the mothers that are here today. For, uh, um, I thank you for my mom and uh, just for all the mothers, Lord God, around the world. And I pray Lord, that you bless them, Father God, and that you watch over them Lord, and protect them. And I just pray that you bless this service, that you open our hearts up and our ears, Lord God. I pray that we be encouraged and uh, that you just lift our hearts up this morning, Lord. And we love you, Lord, and we praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. So, talking on the uh, thing of moms, so, like, like I was saying, some moms are bad, some moms are good, and uh, some moms are great, and then you've got godly moms. And, uh, you, you know, I, I've been thinking about that a lot, about just having a godly mother. And like I said, my mom, she didn't raise me. Me and my brothers were not raised in a God-fearing home or nothing like that. My mom didn't serve God or nothing like that. But she was still my mom, and she did the best for what she had. She did, and, uh, and uh, I've always, uh, you know, growing up, I always admired my mother for just how she took care of me and my brother. She really did uh, take care of us, and um, I'm appreciative of that. I'm thankful of that. And uh, but, but like I said, there's a difference between being a mom and being a godly mother, and that's what that's what we want. You know what I mean? And here we want godly mothers and. Uh, I just want to honor all the women who are godly mothers that uh, raise their kids to fear God. and uh, that, That's an amazing thing. And I want to encourage you all this morning. But in Titus 2, 3 through 5, it says this. It says, but as for you, speak the things which are proper for sound doctrine, that the older men be sober, reverent, temperate, sound in faith and love and patience. The older women, likewise, that they be reverent in behavior, not slanders, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they admonish the young women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, homemakers, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be blasphemed. You know, I read that verse, and I didn't have this in my sermon notes. I read it this morning, and I thought, I'm going to put that in there. Because when I think about this, you don't see a lot of this today. Like this type of women today. You know, it amazes me. Uh, um, it, it truly amazes me. These women nowadays. And, and like I said, I'm just talking because it's Mother's Day. There's men that, men are worse off than the women. But these women who, they'll give their kids away or they don't teach them nothing. They, they just let them do whatever. Like it's like they just don't care about their kids. It, it amazes me. Um. How, how people are nowadays and and I love what this tells you it tells you what what a woman what a woman does or or a mom I like to say that I love where it says they're they're teachers of good things and that they admonish the young women to love their husbands and to love their children you know that's what a mom is think about this you know my kids spend most of their time is spent with their mother it is it's not spent with me I go off to work I have other things to do. Most of my kids' time were spent with their mother. Think about some of you. Most of your kids' time were spent with you, not not your husband. Don't get me wrong. A husband has a big role, and a father has a huge role in the impact on their kids' lives. But the most of the time, a kid's life is spent with their mom. It is. They have a huge impact on us. Think about the, how your mom impacted your life. There, there's nothing like the love of a mother. There's nothing like it. It's one of the closest things that I can think of to godly love. It is. It's the love of a mom, how she loves her kids. Despite what they do or not, they ain't even got a, my wife ain't even met that baby in her belly yet. She loves it. She cherishes it. She, yeah, her, same thing. It, her, it's, we're, we're, I'm using these different pronouns right now. But, uh, so, Heavenly's in there and she just loves, she'd do anything to protect that baby in her belly. 
right? She loves this baby. She hasn't even met this baby, and she just loves it and cherishes it. And she'll sacrifice, she sacrifices everything to carry that baby and to, and to bring it into, into, in, into the world. And, that, and it just amazes me, and, uh, and just the self-sacrifice of moms and, you know, the, the wisdom that they have, right? Moms are wiser than we give them credit. And, you know, uh, I try to tell my kids that sometimes. I know you think what mom's saying is stupid, but you're going to get older one day, and you're going to realize, dang, she knew what she was talking about, Right? How many of you have ever had them moments when you got a little bit older and you're doing something you're like, this is what they was talking about. <laughs> Whenever I thought they was dumb or ignorant, this is what they was talking about. And, uh, and that's what that verse there is saying in Titus. He's saying, look, these older women, and, and, and when you think of older woman, I don't want you to be like, oh, this is like grandma status. No, older woman, my wife to our kids is an older woman, right? She's an older woman, older person in the faith things like this, you know, it's not based on an age, it's just an older woman, a, a mature woman, but they're teachers, and, and you know, when I was thinking about, what made me think about this whole sermon that I'm talking about today, about the love and the wisdom of a mother, was when I was talking to Matthew last uh, Sunday after church, we was talking about him going to college, and I asked him a question, I was like, I, I asked him if it was liberal. Like, they teach all that liberal stuff. Because you hear about it, people are like, man, my kids went off to college, and they just came back these liberal, crazy, like they way out left in their thinking. So I was talking to Matthew like that, and he said, yeah, they they push that stuff. They talk about it and teach it in classes like they, and they do. They slip that stuff in. They like to kind of slide it in there. And Matthew, and uh, me and Matthew was talking, and he said, you know, if you don't have a good foundation, before you go there, he can see where people fall into that stuff. And I thought about that with Matthew. He had a foundation, something that was passed down to him, right? It, it was passed down to him. And he had this foundation so that when he got there, though, those things didn't impact him like it would somebody who didn't have that stuff. And um, and, you, and think about it. Where did Matthew get that from? Who did he spend the most, like I said, who did he probably spend most of the time with? He, yeah, he learned those things from his father and his family and stuff, but a lot of the time he spent with his mom, Jenny, right? She was teaching him stuff, nurturing him as a kid, teaching him, hey, that's wrong, this is right, this is what you're supposed to do, and that's what a mom does, that's what we're supposed to do. So I was at this cowboy thing yesterday, and I know I look like the biggest cowboy there is. I learned how to break a horse yesterday, and uh, but this old boy was breaking this horse yesterday and preaching the gospel. Me and Kyson was watching it. And he brought up this verse, and I never thought about it the way he explained it, but it, it makes me think of what I'm talking about. Proverbs 12, 10. A righteous man regards the life of his animal, but the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. Think about that for a minute. What's that verse saying? He's saying a righteous man regards the life of his animal. So I want you to think about this with a, with a good godly mother, a wise mom. A wise mom regards the life of of her children, right? She 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 knows them. She she regard she wants to do what's best for them, not what they want to do or what they think's best. She wants to do what's best for them. But look what the like that last part says. But the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. You know what he's saying there? So a righteous man regards the life of his animal. He knows his animal. He understands what it needs to be the best it can be to set it up for success, right? But the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. So what he's saying there is the guy, the guy who takes his animal and he just keeps dumping food to it and petting it up and babying it right and not turning it into what it's supposed to be, that's cruel. That's what he's saying. The one who babies, you see people like that? They just let it get fat. Or, like take a horse, for example, like that guy said. He said, this horse right here, one day my intentions for it is to ride it, to work cows with it. He said, that's my intentions for it. He said, if I sit over here and I just baby that thing when he does stuff wrong or let him do what he wants to and just keep dumping feed to him, he said, that's cruel. He's never going to reach his full potential. He's not. He'll never reach his full potential. And that's what a mom, that's that's a good, what a good, wise mother does. And that's why whenever you think, man, she's so dumb, always saying this and that. She don't know what she's talking about. I got this figured out. 
I want you to remember this. Your mom has the best in mind for you. She does. She's wiser than you think. Women, moms are wiser than we think, right? Then we give them credit. We want to be like, oh, she don't know what she's talking about. And then you turn around and life smacks you in the face and you're over here, oh, mom, help me. She's like, I told you, boy. I told you. We got to realize that moms are smart. They're wise. They're awesome. Um, and uh, Proverbs, and hold on, I got another verse here I wanted to read. So like I was talking about uh, with Matthew, he's had this stuff passed down to him. And that's what we're to do as parents and as, right, as, as mothers and as fathers. We have to pass down wisdom. We have to pass down our faith to our kids. That's why in Proverbs 13, 22, it says this. It says, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. You know, I love the first part of that verse where it says a good man, or you can even say a woman, leaves an inheritance to his children's children. What inheritance do we leave to our kids? What are we leaving for our kids? Are we just, and, and I want you to think about this, are you just worried about leaving them stuff, or are you going to leave them something that lasts? Like, the things that Matthew learned that keep him from turning into a liberal nut job, right? And I'm, excuse me if that offends you, but think about it. Those are things that will stick with him for his whole life. He'll always be able to carry those things and have no one can take that away from him. Now, you can leave him houses, money, land, and all that. To get, that stuff's going to perish. It, someone can come in today and take that stuff away from him. But who you are, the character qualities and the morals and the and the faith that you invest into your kids, that's stuff no one can take away from them. And that's why it's so important that we leave our kids. That's the inheritance I want to leave to my children's children. I want that to be passed down, to turn the tide of my family. And the only way that's done is by passing my faith on to my children, right? I pass it on to them. I'm going to pass it on to my grandkids. And I'm going to keep passing it on until I fall over dead. And I'm going to pray to God that they keep doing the same thing. And the way that they'll keep doing the same thing is if they watch me doing it, guess what? They're most likely going to do it. They don't want to hear me just preaching about it. They want you to be being about it, I guess you could say. Like that quote Connie said earlier. I forgot how it goes, but I remember it. It's more about living the gospel than it is preaching, right? Yeah, we need to use some words, but we need to be living it in front of the world around us, in front of our kids. And that's what... uh. That's what a wise mother does. And so, uh, so moving on there, 2 Timothy 1.5, here's a good one. It says, I thank God whom I serve with a pure conscience, as my forefathers did, as without ceasing I remember you in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see you, being mindful of your tears, that I may be filled with joy when I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you. Listen, he's, this is Paul talking to Timothy. He's saying... <coughs> I see this genuine faith that's in you, but look where it started, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded is in you also. You see that? These are two women that passed down what they had. They Paul come to them at some time, preach the gospel, and uh, if you go back, I think it's Acts chapter 16 or 17 where Paul ends up uh, in Galatia, preaches the gospel, and these, these two women get saved. Right? They pass their faith down to their son, Timothy. Or grandma and mom pass it down and Timothy ends up getting saved. That's the kind of inheritance that we want to leave our kids, right? As mo Think about it. A mother's greatest desire, especially a Christian mother, is that her kids serve Christ. Now, Tyson asked Cassie yesterday what uh, she thought he would be when he gets older. She said, I don't care what you are, just love Jesus. I don't care what you do, just love Christ. He'll put you right where you need to be. And um, and so this morning, uh, as I'm ranting about that, the awesomeness and the wisdom and the love of a mom, I wanted to look at Moses' mom real quick because this woman right here, this was a loving and wise woman right here. She, she was smart. And I want to show you Exodus 2, Exodus chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. It says, and a man of the house of Levi went and took as wife, took as wife, took as wife a daughter of Levi. So the woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that he was a beautiful child, she hid him three months. So right here we got Moses' mom. So back right back behind this, the Pharaoh at this time, 
has come down and laid out this decree. He wants, uh, if you look at verse 22 of chapter 1, it says this. So Pharaoh commanded all his people, saying, Every son who is born you shall cast into the river, and every daughter you shall save alive. So Moses, his mom, conceives this baby. She conceives baby Mo, and she's supposed to kill him. She's supposed to take him and throw him in the river. It's pretty much, uh, it'd be the same thing as abortion today. She's supposed to, like this is a decree. Command, this is a decree, a command from the highest up in power. If you get pregnant and it's a boy, he's dead. It does not matter what you think. He, he has to go. That's the decree. But it says when she saw he was a beautiful child, she hid him three months. You see her love for that kid. She's seen that baby and she's like, uh-uh, this is my beautiful baby. I'm taking care of him. I don't care what nobody says. Any of y'all got a, had a mom like that? She fight tooth and nail for you. Be ready to scrap. Some of you are moms like that, huh? Mess with my baby if you want to. We'll be scrapping. I don't care what the law says. That's her thoughts right here. She's like, I will bust you up if you come at my baby. So she hit him for three months. Now look, it says, but when she could no longer hide him, she took an ark of, uh, this would be Jack right here. You wouldn't be able to hide him. He too crazy. You'd have to build something. But look, she, this is where she gets wise. Like you see her love for her child and in her love, she's like, okay, what can I do? It says, but when she could no longer hide him, she took an ark of bulrushes for him, doweled it with asphalt and pitch, put the child in it and laid it in the reeds by the river's bank. And his sister stood afar off to know what would be done to him. Then the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river and her maidens walked along the riverside. And when she saw the ark among the reeds, she sent her maid to get it. And when she opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the baby wept. So she had compassion on him and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call a nurse for you from the, from the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for you? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. So the maiden went and called the child's mother. Then Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child away and nurse him for me and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child, nursed him, and the child grew, and she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. So she called his name Moses, saying, because I drew him out of the water. You know, I read that story. That's the amazing story of a, of a loving, wise mother. I mean, just think about it. This woman's backed against the walls. There's nothing she could do to change the decree that's out there. There ain't nothing mom can do. It doesn't matter. She could petition all day long. That baby boy is supposed to die. And she's like, no, we ain't doing this. So she crafts this crazy plan. She builds this little boat out of reeds and puts, you know, the pitch and everything on it. And uh, She does what she's supposed to. She tosses him in the river, right? And he floats right on down, right, uh, right to Pharaoh's daughter. I mean, it was set up. I mean, you see this, her faith saved her son's life pretty much is what it did her faith in god because you see him he, his hands over this whole thing and um i love how she does this and uh and in the story you you see the sister mary how, how she stays back and she's watching from a distance when pharaoh's daughter picks her up she runs over there and then she's like hey get one of the women to come take care of the kids she just goes back and gets mama now mama's raising her kid legally because pharaoh's daughter ain't that a neat that's a the wisdom of a mama right there she she crafted this whole little plan and and she did it you know she's a godly mother she's a god-fearing woman and you see god's hand is on all that she's doing and he blesses this baby and uh and uh but she gets to raise her own kid and i don't want to stop stop here but so so she does that but i want you to notice something she got to raise her own kids so she's gotten to pour the whole time she was getting to nurture and raise this baby she was getting to pour into this baby that's she she knew i only have a certain amount of time with this kid i have to be pouring everything that i know about god so she that's what she's doing teaching him everything she knows about it. Uh, being a Hebrew, this is who you are. This is who God is. You got to fear God. You need to focus on God. I, I see her. That's what she had to have been doing to him as she's sitting here because she knows. Look, I'm gonna have to give him up to Pharaoh. He, this baby boy is gonna have to go out in the world. 
Just like Matthew, that day came where, hey, I got to fly the coop. It's time to go. I mean, I, and, and that day, is it comes for all of our children. Where guess what? They got to leave home. And whatever we, and that's why it's so important for us to pour into our children. We, we have to pour into them. Biblical truths, we have to do that stuff. We have to show them what faith looks like, what faith in Christ is. We have to. That way it gives them a foundation so when they do have to go out into Egypt, guess what? They have a firm foundation to stand on. And they're not so persuaded by what the world's telling them they need to be doing and none of that stuff, right? They have this to hold on to. They have that anchor of Christ to hold on to. That's why it's so important, moms, dads, all of us, to pour into our children. They have to have that. And I thank you mothers who've done that, who've done that. And you gotta, and I want you to understand one thing. If you got kids, you raised them how they were supposed to, you anchored them down in Christ, and they flew the coop and went off sideways, guess what? Sometimes it happens. All you can do is pray for those kids and pray that everything you poured into them, that the Holy Spirit can use that stuff and draw them back to Jesus. Because guess what? Just because we raise our kids right, they have to grow up. They have free choice, and they're gonna make their own decisions. You know, I'll tell you a story. This is kind of a bad on my part. But when I was first saved, I used to look at uh, like pastors and stuff and you'd see them have wayward kids. And, you know, sometimes I would think like, where did them parents go wrong? Or what, what's going on? Like I used to think that way. And then as I got older, and this is where, you remember what I was saying about mom's wisdom? Like she don't know what she's talking about. This is one of those deals where I'm smacked in the face because as my kids get older, I always think about that. Like, I can raise them the best I can. Me and Cassie can show them, teach them everything we can. But there's going to come a day where they have to make their own decisions. They have to. And I, I no longer can make decisions for them. Cassie can't make decisions for them. They, they're going to. And you just have to pray that they make the right ones, that everything you poured into them, that they grab a hold of it and they make the right decisions. So uh, don't be discouraged, Mom. If you do what you're supposed to, that's all you can do. That's all we can do is trust God and pour into our kids and just keep loving them and um, showing them Jesus Christ. So, so Moses, right? Like I said, he, his mom's pouring into him. She's teaching him. And look what Hebrews 11, 23 through 27 says. It says, by faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's command. By faith, now listen to this, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt, for he looked to the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who was invisible. And let me show you, Acts 7, 20 through 22 says, At this time Moses was born and was well-pleasing to God, and he was brought up in his father's house for three months. But when he was set out, Pharaoh's daughter took him away and brought him up as her own son. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and deeds. You see this? So when Moses left home, when he went back to Pharaoh's palace, he was indoctrinated in all of Egypt's teaching, like everything. The way he was indoctrinated in all of it. It's kind of like uh, my dad, every time I see him, when I talk to him, uh, he'll always say, don't let them kids go to college. Hey, he doesn't. My dad does not like college because he thinks that's all they want to do is just indoctrinate kids. Like that's, it's just how he just thinks that. But guess what? You can be... Even if it ain't their intentions, a person, if, I'm just getting off on a rant. Let me stop. So, where was I at? I was going to, I was about to confuse myself real quick. So, um, so like I said, Moses was indoctrinated in all the teachings of Egypt, right? He, he was. But somewhere along the line, he figures out, and how did he, it says, by faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. How did he figure out these things? How did he know to look to, to, to esteem the reproaches of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt? Who taught him this stuff? I believe that he was taught these things as his mom still had him before she sent him off 
to Pharaoh, she ingrained these things in that little boy. She, she was ingraining those things in him. That way, whenever he got there, yeah, I learned this stuff. And just like Matthew, yeah, he gained some knowledge and wisdom of the things that he's studying. But like the crazy stuff you want to teach me, guess what? In one ear, out the other. I know what's right and wrong. My mama and daddy taught me right and wrong, right? They showed me right and wrong. And that's why it's so important for us as parents to teach our kids, look, this is right and wrong. And when they say, well, why is that right or wrong? Be like, because God's word says this is right and that's wrong. Always back up what you do with this. If you do that, you're golden. You're good. If you just tell, tell your kids, oh, that's wrong just because I think it's wrong, right? Or that's, you know, that's wrong because I believe it's wrong. There ain't no weight to that, right? But whenever I can say, look, God says it's wrong. You can't argue with that because this is the supreme authority of life and everything. This is. And that's why it's important that we teach our kids these things and um, that we be godly parents, that we uh, feed our kids the word of God. You know, it, it reminds me of the, when I think of Moses and doing that stuff, it reminds me of the Hebrew boys there in Daniel, Right? If you think about them Hebrew boys, they got they they get uh, brought to King Nebuchadnezzar, right? He changes their name, their identity, and everything. Like he he sends them to his school to learn all his stuff, changes their, gives them a whole new name and all that stuff. But them boys still serve God. They because they knew who God was. Why? Because they was raised to know who God was and to fear Him. And it didn't matter. The world can call me what they want. The world can try to try to teach me what they want. But my mama and daddy showed me who I am. And this is, I'm a child of the king, of the king of kings and the Lord of lords. That's who I am. And that's what we got to teach our kids and teach them to respect that and to fear God and, uh, and to love him with all their heart. And you moms who do that, I'm greatly proud of you and I'm thankful for that. And, and, uh, and, like, and if you're a mom who doesn't do that, guess what? You can always start today. You can always start today. It's never too late to start. Uh, okay. So coming on, talking about this wisdom, turn, I'm going to look over at it, Proverbs real quick. Proverbs chapter 31. Dave read it this morning. But Proverbs 31 verses 1 through 10 says this. It says, The words of King Lemuel, the utterance which his mother taught him. <laughs> Listen to this. He says, What my son and what son of my womb and what son of my vows do not give your strength to women. Look, this is a wise mom right here. This this is like the... These first 10 verses, I know a lot of times people like to read 10 through 33 or whatever, you know, a virtuous wife. But these first 10, these first nine verses to me is like the wisest. It's, it's like a blueprint for a mom. Because look what he says. He, this is a mom pouring her heart out to her kids, saying, look, if you'll do these things, you're going to be set up for success. She says, what, my son, and what son of my womb, and what son of my vows? Do not give your strength to wisdom or to women, nor your ways to that which destroys kings. You see, she's saying, hey, don't, don't give your... Uh, don't give your strength away to these women. Now, when you think of women, just think of sin in and of itself. I mean, don't give your strength away to sin. Don't give your life away to sin because it will destroy you. She says, it's not for kings, old Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes intoxicating drink. Lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the justice of the afflicted. Give strong drink to him who is perishing and wine to those who are bitter of heart. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. Open your mouth for the speechless in the case of in the cause of all who are appointed to die. Open your mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. That's this mom. She's teaching her son this. She's saying, Look, do these things. This is this right here is wisdom. Like this, you know, stay away from sin. Stand for justice and uh, and stand for the cause of the poor and the needy is what she's telling you. Do these things, she's saying, and, and things will go well for you. She's a wise, uh, very wise woman. Um, 
James 3, 17 says, But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy, good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Um, I, when I think about this verse here in James, the reason why I put it here reminds me of my grandma. I was, this verse, like when I read it, I see my grandma, my mama. Like, just read, tell me, I, tell me I ain't lying. Listen, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure. My grandma is, when you talk about she is just a pure lady. Then peaceable. She's peaceable. She's gentle. She's loving. She, she's all these things, willing to yield, full of mercy. And she is probably the most forgiving woman ever. Like, people walk all over her. I got cousins and stuff that walk all over my grandma. And she constantly just... It's just like the most gracious person. You ever see somebody like that and you stand back and you're like, man, I just wish I could turn into my grandma for a day. I'd go cut a tornado through there. But that's but this is how she is. She she's peaceable. She's she's just uh without partiality and without hypocrisy. And I and um and I think about that because that's what the Bible's telling us, that's what wisdom looks like, and and you know. There's not many men when you look at them, you you read this verse and you're uh, like, oh, he's so gentle and full of mercy. But like, it's like the picture to me of a, of a of a mother. Whenever I look at this, they're pure, peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy, and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And uh, Proverbs three thirteen through eighteen says, "Happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding." For her proceeds, I like how in Proverbs, if you read Proverbs, uh, Solomon, as he writes through them, he, he wrote most of the Proverbs, if not all of them. He 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 compares wisdom to a woman. It's all it's in the feminine, and he compares it to a woman. And a lot of people think that in uh, Proverbs thirty one verses uh, ten through thirty one that he's actually speaking of wisdom when he talks about the virtuous wife. That he's actually talking about wisdom there, like he's speaking in a type of a figurative type speech. And uh, I seen that the other day, and I never heard that, but it kind of makes sense as you go along through it. But I like how he compares wisdom to a woman. That's how he kind of talks about wisdom, and that's what he's saying here. He says, "For her proceeds are better than the profits of silver, and her gain than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies." And all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her, and happy are all who retain her. You know, I love that. Happy is the man who finds wisdom. You know, I'm so happy that I've got the wife that I have, that she's a godly woman, that she tries to, you know, impart wisdom to our kids, regardless if they want to hear it or not, right? That's that's what she does, and, uh, and it's just a great thing, and uh, um, I just think about that for all of us, that we, uh, I don't even know where I'm going with this, but just be thankful for your mother today, and for the wisdom, and the protection, and the love that they've given us, even if like I said, even if you don't have a, didn't have a godly mother, I guarantee you your mom loves you. Guaranteed. Guaranteed your mother loves you. I know for a fact my mom loves me. Like, there, it ain't a doubt in my mind. And, uh, you know, I just, I think God put it in a woman to be that, like it's an instinct within a mom. It is. And I believe all moms have it. Even the ones that are strung out on drugs and seem like they just throw their kids off to the side. I know somewhere in there that has to tug at their hearts. They have to think about that stuff. They, it just has to be there because I believe God put it there. And, um, and like I said, there's nothing like the love of a mother. And, you know, if you're here and you've messed up as a mom, remember, there's always, all, all you can do is get up and give it to the Lord and start being that mom that you're supposed to be today. You know, if you're doing what you're supposed to, keep doing it. Know that God's watching over you when things get hard. Guess what? He's right there to help you and lead you and guide you along. But don't give up because 
guess what? The fruit of it, it's going to come out one day. It's worth it. It's worth what we do, right? Everything you put into your kids, it's worth it. It is. And remember, your greatest ministry is your kids. It is. Your kids and your husband. That's, that's the greatest ministry you got as a woman. And, um, you know, the world might talk down on that or whatever they want to do, but you just remember, God thinks that's a precious thing to God. A woman raising her children like she's supposed to and pouring wisdom, pouring wisdom into them and loving on them, I'm telling you, that is precious in the sight of God. It truly is. And, uh, I thank all you women here today and all you moms and future moms and grandmoms and all of you. Thank you. And God bless you all. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I love you. and I praise you, Lord. And I thank you for this church. I thank you for all of these women in here, Lord. That you bless them, that you protect them, Father God, that you strengthen them and uh, just encourage them.